All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about voting rights and models of voting behavior. Let's do it. All right, so as an important piece of background information before we do this video and the next video, I want you to know the fact that state governments are actually in charge of federal elections. In the next video, we'll talk about what state policies mean for federal elections. And in this video, we're going to consider how the federal government has gotten more involved in elections, even though they technically are still run by state governments. Now, the main way the federal government has gotten involved has been through constitutional amendments and pieces of legislation. So if we think about them, we know some amendments that deal with voting rights, and that's exactly what we have in mind. Things like the 15th, 17th, 19th, 24th, and 26th amendments. So let's go through those. This should be review at this point, but again, it doesn't hurt to think about these things again. The 15th amendment said that race cannot be a barrier to voting. So essentially this gave black men the right to vote legally in 1870. Unfortunately, we know that many southern states especially, they put many obstacles up and prevented black men from being able to exercise this right to vote. That's where the 24th Amendment and the Voting Rights Act will come in in just a minute or two. Before we get to that though, we're going to just go in order of the amendments. We have the 17th Amendment, which established the direct election of senators. And again, this gave the citizens of the country more power, made the United States more democratic, because now people could choose their own senator just like they can vote for their own member of the House of Representatives. So again, whereas state legislatures used to choose senators, now the people got to. The 19th Amendment expanded suffrage by giving women the right to vote. Again, you can keep in mind that some states had already given women the right to vote prior to the 19th Amendment, but what this amendment did was it made sure that women in the entire United States, regardless of which state they live in, also had that right to vote. The 24th Amendment banned poll taxes, and again, we're going to talk more about that momentarily. And lastly, the 26th Amendment, what it did was it lowered the voting age to 18, again, nationwide, allowing anybody that is 18 years of age to qualify to be able to register to vote. All right, so what about that 24th Amendment? It banned poll taxes, and we're going to consider this alongside the Voting Rights Act of 1965 which banned literacy tests and other obstacles to vote. And this greatly increased minority voter turnout. Now, shifting gears a little bit, what we're going to talk about the rest of this video are four models of voting behavior. Essentially, this is talking about ways that people make their decision of which candidate to vote for. So we have what's known as rational choice voting, retrospective voting, prospective voting, and we also have party line voting. So let's consider each of these four. Rational choice voting is the idea that a person will vote based on the perception that a particular person's policies will make him or her personally better off. So it might be the idea that maybe a person is a small business owner and a particular candidate is promising tax cuts or deregulation, something that will make their life easier as a small business owner and so they vote for that candidate not really worried about other parts of that person's platform, but they personally will benefit. Retrospective voting is voting based on the recent past and kind of looking at the perception of, are you better off now as a result of this person that's in office or do you think things are getting worse? And so if you think things are getting better off, then you vote for the same person, the same party. If you think things are getting worse, the country is going in the wrong direction, then a person might vote for the other party or the challenging candidate. So again, many people do this because it's based off of, well, things are going all right, so let's keep the same person in power. Or things aren't going so well, let's get somebody new in there. Prospective voting is the idea of looking ahead, looking to the future, and trying to anticipate what are likely to be the issues that the next president is going to have to deal with. And which of the candidates do I trust more to deal with those particular issues? So maybe you think that there is going to be uh, problems in the Middle East. Which president do I trust on foreign policy issues in the Middle East? Uh, which president do I trust more to make Supreme Court nominations? Uh, which presidential candidate or which person would I trust more as president to make all these other decisions? And so this um, requires a certain amount of uh, thinking, of research, and of knowledge of the platforms and the characteristics of the candidates. 
And the last type of voting is party line voting. This might be the most simple. This is where a person just votes based on the party identification of a candidate, and they'll vote for all the candidates from that party, basically regardless of anything else. So they would go right down the ballot, president, Democrat, Senator, Democrat, Representative, Democrat, Mayor, Democrat, every single person, if they have the letter D or the name Democrat next to their name, they're going to vote for that person. Or conversely, they're going to do the same thing looking for all the Republican candidates and just vote for all of them straight down the ticket. Alright guys, so this is the first video of Unit 5, so stick with me throughout. We're going to deal with parties, interest groups, elections, and the news media, so stick with me for all your Unit 5 needs. Till next time, this is Ben. A La Money Production. Thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Do me a favor, hit that like button if this video helped you. It really does help me to spread these videos to other AP Gov students. So do me a favor and help me out in that way. See you guys next time.